Today in matters of fact, President Rodrigo Duterte's allies in the House of Representatives got their way with the uh, death penalty bill, which will be uh, deliberated on at the, House, at the Senate. And now up next in their agenda is the bill that seeks to lower the age of uh, criminal responsibility from 50 years old to 9 years old. But how will this actually address issues such as concerns that uh, criminal syndicates are actually making use of the existing law to take advantage of children because the, the law would not go after them. Joining us this morning is the uh, UNICEF representative to the Philippines, uh, Lota Sylvander. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Now first let's talk about the uh, age of criminal responsibility. Different countries, different approaches to criminality. First, is there really a global standard when it comes to uh, the age of criminal responsibility? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> There's a global movement to something that we call restorative justice, mm -hmm. which means that young people, generally uh, young people below the age of 16, are treated differently uh, than adults in the criminal system. So they are not put into jail, although they might be punished in the sense that they're not allowed to go home and so on. Um, but, and, and that the thinking is we need to restore them back to normality, take the criminal acts out of them and restore them back to getting education, to living a normal life, being with a family if they have a family mm. and so on, instead of putting them into a prison mm. where they live in an institution, they're isolated from society, and they probably don't go to school, and they probably also will have a, a lifetime damage to mm. their development. But how do you determine, for example, the, the, the age, the minimum age of criminal responsibility? Yeah. The existing law in the Philippines is, uh, makes use of 15 years old. Yeah. In some countries, it's as young as 7 or yeah. 8 years old. Yeah. So how do you determine the age? Uh, that's very, very, I think, very... Uh, it's not really based on any facts. Um, it's more based on what is the custom and the tradition in that particular country. Um, the fact is that a child's brain is not completely mm. developed until it's 16 or even older. Mm. And so uh, from a child perspective, uh, and the rights-based perspective, 16 would probably be the best age mm. to determine whether a child is able to take a decision, mm. oh, if I commit this crime, this and this might happen to me, should I or shouldn't I do this? So that is the age when, uh, based on science, a yes. child would know the consequences of his action. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, how come countries are, are still divided when it comes yeah, that, to the age? <laughs> that's a conundrum. Uh, I think it, it's um, uh, based on old laws. It's based on what they think they should be doing to that child. So there are uh, countries that have laws that are way under 15, mm. like, uh, but they still have, let's say, the age of criminal responsibility is 10. But if a child then below uh, above 10 or below 10 commits a crime, they're not put into the criminal system. Mm. They have a separate functioning system mm. to care for those children. Of course, there, there are countries that don't have that, that actually yeah. put children into jail, and those are many developing countries. And there are a lot of laws that are good on paper, but actually are problematic when it comes to the implementation. Exactly, and that's where the problem lies in the Philippines, yeah. I think. The law is really good, yeah. and in fact, it's been internationally lauded. Uh, so many other countries have looked at the Philippine law and said this is what we want. Mm. Uh, but uh, there is a problem in the implementation. Uh, much of the responsibility is pushed down to the local governments, and they, if, especially if they're small and poor mm. local governments, have don't have enough uh, capacity. They don't have enough money. Uh, they might not have the facilities to take care mm. of the of juvenile delinquents and so on. So uh, I think. Putting more efforts into the implementation would be the answer rather than changing the law. So the problem is not the law? No. No, let, 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 let's try to talk about, let's talk about the, the attempt to actually lower the, age, the minimum age of criminal responsibility. You're saying that based on science, based on facts, uh, a good uh, age, a minimum age of criminal responsibility would be 16. Yeah. At present, it's 15 years old in the Philippines, and we're pushing it down for yeah. 9 years old. Yeah. So what would be the repercussions of that? How would that affect, for example, the approaches when it comes to uh, restoring youth offenders or yeah. child offenders to become more, uh, again, productive members of society? That's the approach, right? Yes. 
Well, as far as we know, in the draft bill and also in the, the documents that come out as a technical working group in Congress, there's nothing in the proposed new law that actually talks about restorative justice. Mm. It really talks about putting children into the criminal system, mm. just as our adults. However, when I've spoken to some congressmen and senators, they've said, no, 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 they, these children will not be put into normal prisons. But we all know that prisons in the Philippines are overfull with adults. Definitely. And there is, seems to be no real effort to build a lot of new prisons to do something about that overcrowding. Yeah. How will then yeah. there be efforts to actually create new prisons or whatever facilities for very young children who are put into prison? B so based, on based on the law, they are supposed to be separated. They should not be yes. mixed with No, the they should not. That's <coughs> against all international conventions to put children with adults in prison. B b because the, this is actually a priority measure or filed by, by, by the House Speaker, yeah. no less. Yeah. It's House Bill Number 2, and uh, the President himself has been pushing for this uh, for this amendment. Yeah. So, so the problem is that we have all these existing problems in the criminal justice system with the implementation of the juvenile justice law, yet yes. they want to lower the age. Yes. Oh. So the, ju the, the justice system is overcrowded, overloaded. Uh, we will then put, if the, the law is changed, even more people into that system and overcrowd the already overcrowded uh, mm. prison system. Um, but what, what we should remember also, I think, is if we look at what, what is it that the law is trying to accomplish? Yeah. Uh, and of course the President's argument is we need to do something about crime and criminality, and that's, that, that's a very good thing. Mm. But if we look at how many crimes are committed by children below the age of 15, 1.7% mm. of all crimes are committed by those by children. This is the uh, that's from the average. Philippine National Police figures. So that's the statistics we have. And if we really want to do something about criminality and criminal uh, activity in the Philippines, is lowering the age of criminal responsibility really going to do something mm. about the big bulk of criminality? Probably not at all. But it will put a huge strain on the justice system and, of course, on all those individual children who will be put into the justice system. In your conversation with congressmen and senators, yes. uh, were you able to argue uh, this, this point that we're talking about now? Partly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the response is then usually, oh, but they will not be put into prison. But mm. then we see nothing in the proposed new bill and nothing in the working uh, the documents that come out from the technical working group that alludes to any other system being put into place. Which particular congressman have you spoken to? Ooh, I'm so bad with names. I'm sorry. For example, the, <laughs> for example, the, the House Speaker. No, or, I have not met. Or him. the Deputy Speaker, uh, Fred Castro. He's no, I have not the met the with them. But but uh, what I can say is that the special representative to the Secretary General of the UN on uh, violence against children, mm -hmm. Marta Santos Page, she has sent a letter both to the House Speaker uh, and to the Senate. The Senate President. Yes, and uh, explained in very scientific terms what happens to a child and why a child is not able to uh, actually take the proper decisions and, 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 and uh, also what happens if they are put in prison to their brains, to their development and the damage, the li lifelong damage. And what was them. the response? None. None. Absolutely none. How about uh, an acknowledgement that they received the letter? No, we haven't had that either. Okay, yeah. so this serves as a notice <laughs> <laughs> yes. that they actually sent a letter to the Senate President yes. and to the House Speaker yes. and there's no response so far. There is no response. Explain everything. Yes. Okay. It's a three-page letter, I believe. Mm. Yeah. This was sent when? It was sent about a month and a half ago. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, when they return from the, uh, from the break, they're expected to tackle this Yes. measure yes. among uh, many other bills in the House of Representatives at least. Now let's talk about the context. In the Philippines you usually mention this whenever uh, especially a foreigner uh, talks about a particular approach to certain things in the Philippines. How about the, the, the argument that uh, perhaps uh, the, the, the things that you've been mentioning, this is not fit in the Philippine context given the, the criminality, mm. uh, the situation that we have in the Philippines. How do you respond to that? Well, my response would be, um, first of all, I think um, 
the sort of the notion of family and the family institution in the Philippines is very strong. What the bill on restorative justice or the present law actually talks about is restoring children back to normality, which means back to the family, back to uh, going to school and doing. Mm -hmm. So giving the family and the local government or the barangay a lot of responsibility in making sure that that child is brought back into society. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I, I, my, my children are half Filipino. Uh, mm -hmm. So I know from my own personal experience how strong the Filipino family is and how important it is to not lose members of the family. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, many of the children who are committing crime and who are caught and, and who are into the juvenile justice system, of course, have broken families. Uh, they come, they maybe don't even have families, mm. uh, so there needs to be other measures in place to make sure that they are protected from further exploitation because they often have been exploited by adults mm. from gangs or in other ways exploited, then they need to be protected from further exploitation, but then maybe they need to be institutionalized and in that way brought back into society. Well, technically, it's supposed to be institutionalized already because of the existing law, right? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Now, let's talk about that. That is a common argument by those pushing for the lowering of the age of criminal responsibility. You have this uh, crime syndicates, drug gangs, uh, taking advantage of the law, yeah. making use of children for their nefarious activities. Yeah. So how do you respond to that argument that uh, this criminal syndicates have found certain loopholes in the law? Uh, of course, th they do that and, and, and they use children as messengers and, and peddlers and whatever. But uh, the law does not keep children away from punishment. Mm. It's not like they will forever, they're just, nothing happens. Mm. Of course something happens to them. They will have a record. Uh, they will be taken care of by, you know, they will be going through the police and the courts and all of that. They will also have, if they live, uh, are lucky enough to live in, a, in an LGU that has social workers and a social uh, support system, they will be put through all of that. Some of them will be put into an institution. If they're lesser crimes, they will be given back to the community and the family and be yeah. taken care. There'll be a, a system in place to make sure that this does not happen again. Mm. And so it's not like they go absolutely scot-free yeah. and, and, you know, it, it, there's a leniency and, and like, oh, sorry, you've committed a crime, we'll let you go. No, that, that doesn't happen. And I don't know where that idea comes from. Well, uh, it's just another argument uh, by those pushing for the lowering of the age of uh, criminal yeah. responsibility. But there's actually a provision in the existing law uh, against the exploitation of children for the commission of crimes. Yeah. So there's actually that provision in the uh, Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act that would go after these adults yeah. Uh, yeah. making use of the children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, I think, the important part of this because adults have the capacity to make decisions. They have the capacity to plan. They have the capacity to understand what happens to them mm -hmm. if they solicit children to make criminal acts. So. Uh, I would say continue going after the adults, not the children. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that our children are protected, loved, brought back to the family, brought back to the community, are allowed to uh, have a good education, and just be children. By the way, you mentioned that uh, letters were sent to the Senate President and the House Speaker. Yes. So h how concerned is the international community, at the very least uh, UNICEF, I think we're very concerned actually and we, we do get a lot of issues and questions from actually around the world because the Philippines was held as a good example and everyone was looking at how the implementation of the existing law was, was progressing mm -hmm. and now it feels that we get expressions, are you actually walk, walking backwards in the Philippines and then why is this happening and, and so we're trying to present all the facts, the scientific facts which are global, uh, and, and, and also the Philippine facts, 1.7% of children under 15 commit crime, or all, of all crime are committed by children under the mm. 15. Is it really worth that effort? So is uh, UNICEF or the United Nations closely watching this development in we the We are, very closely, mm. both from, from the global side, from the Secretary General's office, and, and, and from here, of course, from, from uh, both UNICEF but the United Nations in general here. Mm. Now, you said that this is one of the best uh, measures existing yes. when it comes to addressing uh, 
uh, youth offenders. Let's talk about the good and also the bad. First, the good. Uh, it actually spells out uh, in detail what should be a, uh, what approach should be used when it comes to handling youth offenders. And among that is the community-based uh, intervention. Yeah. So what are we exactly talking about when it comes to community-based intervention? How does it work? Uh, well, it works the way that, that uh, usually uh, the police and the social welfare, so DSWD, uh, would get those who on a daily basis meet the child, whether it's family, teachers, others, and they will all sit together with or without the child or both sometimes mm -hmm. and come up with a plan how can this child be protected from the gang that they're in or uh, the company that they're in or whatever has happened to the child and mm -hmm. make a plan so the social worker is usually responsible together both with with the police but also with the prosecutor to make a plan mm -hmm. uh, for the restoration of this child if it is a serious thing, like if the child mm. is on drug, drugs and have committed a crime, it, institutionalization might be necessary. If not, then hopefully the child could be either kept at home or be put into a foster care. Yeah, I think when it comes to serious crimes committed by children uh, between the age of 12 and 15, yeah. they're automatically sent to what they call uh, Bahay Pag-asa, yeah. the house of hope. Yeah. So this is an option for them? It is. Mm. Sometimes those uh, uh, by Pagasa are very far from where the children live normally. I mean here in Metro Manila it's not a problem usually. Uh, but imagine you live in, in sort of a rural area somewhere yeah. in the Philippines or you know, it, it's far away and they really, really lose contact with their community. Yeah. Uh, so that might make it even more difficult then for them to be reintegrated once they, they seem to be um, have lost their criminal uh, activities and, and behavior. How, how should it go? Should there be a Bahay Pag-asa or intervention, uh, intensive juvenile inter intervention and support center for each local government? Well, that's going to be impossible because there's so many poor local governments. Mm. But I, at but least in each province, there should be province. one, yeah. Uh, which is unfortunately not the case yet. Mm -hmm. But that's where the implementation uh, should focus and that's where uh, the money and the effort should go and also of course training social workers, training yeah. uh, prosecutors and police uh, to make sure that, that they understand what is the best interest of the child. And also I think the problem is, uh, one problem is that we do not have enough social workers yeah. to, to handle all these cases. Yeah. How, la lastly, how about the role of the family? Because one common problem is that, yes, you, you, you subject this uh, youth offender to mm. this intervention program, supposedly mm. involving the family, yeah. but when they go back to the community, uh, nothing has changed. Yeah. So basically, they'll be going back to the same situation that led to, to, to a part particular crime that yeah. they were able to commit. So there should be uh, interventions for the family as well, especially if the family is not capable or don't understand what they can do. Uh, well, we all know about unruly teenagers and how difficult it is to deal with them. So the, 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 the social welfare should also be able to deal with the family. Uh, how do you meet an unruly uh, teenager? How do you respond? Do you respond to violence and spanking and whatever? No, you shouldn't. It's positive reinforcement is the best thing, way to meet these children. Um, so. The family should also go through a process mm -hmm. and, and learn how to be better parents. Okay. We're looking forward to how the events would unfold in the House of Representatives, most especially. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.